Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Brahmana uh, has to uh, read Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, Bhagavad Gita and Vesha, uh, Vesha should uh, protect the animals and bacon and should, uh, Kshatriya should protect the community. These are four basic things. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Yeah. The Vaishyas have to protect the animals and uh, take care of the cows. And Kshatriya has to give protection. Taxation was also mentioned. The system was everybody would pay one-fourth, right? One-fourth of their salary. Well, I don't know, one-fourth salary. Salary, if you receive a salary, it means you're a sudra, right? Just a worker. But I think it's the Vaishyas are supposed to give one-fourth. The farmers, they would give one-fourth. And the Kshatriyas, they cannot beg, but the, the Brahmanas can beg. All right, any other points? Anyone? Okay. Yes. Yes, please, please do. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Very nice of you to share this with us. Any response from the ladies? Of course, ladies are naturally shy. Most ladies, and unless they're brought up in a, you know, a very materialistic, hedonistic society, generally women by nature are, are shy. They learn from their mother. And people that should be taught, probably we're saying people should be taught to depend on the Lord and whatever is provided by nature, by the goodwill of the Lord. We spoke about that yesterday, about the in industries and factories, and they're not really necessary. You can get everything just simply by depending on the Lord, depending on nature. Everything is provided for our need. We don't need all these chemical factories. We don't need slaughterhouses. We don't need shopping malls. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead. Now, here's Grandfather Bhishma. Oh, what is this? Okay, chapter 9, overview. We heard about Grandfather Bhishma instructing on Varnashram Dharma and then at a certain point, time comes, Grandfather Bhishma feels it's actually time for him to fix his mind or to depart from the world and he prepares himself for departing from this world, right? Because Uta, the period of Uttarayana came, the sun changed its direction and Bhishma, under, this is a time when he was planning to depart from the world, he had already spoken for many days and on many different topics and given a lot of instruction and advice to Maharaj Yudhisthira and pacified his mind. 
and now it's time for him to make his very glorious departure from the world. So, text 29 to 34 describe how he with, withdraws his consciousness from the world and focuses it on Lord Krishna. And of course, Grandfather Bhishma is very fortunate because he has Lord Krishna standing in front of him. So he's able to really focus on Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is there, it's described Chatur Bhuja, forearm form, appearing before Grandfather Bhishma. And not only does he focus his eyes looking at the form of Krishna, but he fixes his mind on Krishna and he begins to recount some of the different pastimes which Grandfather Bhishma had, or even sometimes pastimes which he was not present, but which he remembers. And uh, he recounts them in the presence of all the devotees. Remember, Vyasa Dev is there, and so many great sages have all come to see Grandfather Bhishma because Bhishma is he, he, he's like a demigod. Although he's in a human form, he's like on the level of Shiva and Brahma. He's actually one of the eight Vasus, but he'd taken this human form and he is. Uh, been given the blessing by his father, his great father, Maharaj Santanu, that he can remain alive as long as he wants. And any, when he's ready to depart from the world, he can depart. So although his body was filled with arrows and he's laying on this bed of arrows, not comfortable, but he's able to maintain his life and he is waiting for this auspicious moment. Lord Krishna has come in front of him and Bhishma fixes his mind on Lord Krishna. So that's 29 to 34. Then 35 to 49, we have Bhishma offering his prayers to Krishna, right? Describing these different pastimes. We mentioned one of the descriptions which Bhishma has. How he remembers Arjuna as his chariot driver. Uh, uh, rather, Krishna is the chariot driver of Arjuna. And he even describes Lord Krishna by the name Vijay Shaka. Vijay Shaka, which is, it means that one who is the friend of Vijay Saki, eh? Vijay Saki, the one who is the friend of Arjuna. So he described Lord Krishna in that way. And Prabhupada explains to us how Lord Krishna likes to have himself described in relation to his devotees. We know Srila Bhakti, we know Thakur, he gave us so many nice songs with the names of Krishna. Like, Yashomati Nandana Brajabara Nagara. These kind of songs. Udila Aruna Pura so many songs and names of Krishna, and many of the names of Krishna are in relation to his devotees and to his different pastimes. So Krishna takes pleasure in that, in being connected with his devotees. So there are many verses, we'll go through them a little bit, and then at the end of the section, We'll hear how Grandfather Bhishma departs from the world and then Maharaj Yudhisthira has to begin ruling the kingdom according to the instructions he'd received from Grandfather Bhishma. So this is the uh, main points of the chapter. So we, we request you just take a, a few minutes just to read over verses 33, 34 and 38 and give us some points about Bhishma Dev's relationship with the Lord. Right? Can you just look through these, these few verses? 33, 34.
I already mentioned, of course, how Krishna is the friend of Arjuna. And how Bhishma Dev had named him, had named Lord Krishna like that in relation to Arjuna. Yes? And anybody? You have anything? You can you picked up anything about Bhishma Dev's relationship with Lord Krishna? Yes? Vira Gopal Prabhu? I pronounce my hands. So I'm just reading verse 934. And in here, his relationship is very intimate and he's so absorbed in Sri Krishna that he notices every minute detail of his whilst he's um, on the battlefield. So th this, this is quite intense. Um, the only thing I can compare it to is when in the material world, um, you know, when some a boy is in love with a girl and, and a girl is in love with a boy, they observe every small detail of him. And he's so immersed in it. That, that's the point from 334, uh, 934 I could gather. Okay. So certainly Bhisma Dev's mind is very absorbed in the Lord. He's appreciating all of the different features of the Lord. Maybe you could just tell us some of those features. Yes, uh, he's saying the flowing hair of Lord Krishna. He's looking at the hair and the color of the hair and how the dust uh, of it's, it's become, changed its color because of the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses. And then the sweat on his face, sweat beads on his face. And he sees them as decoration. This is so beautiful. Intensified by the wounds. Inten by the wounds, yes. Uh. Yes, that, that his own arrows, uh, Vishwabha's arrows, and he's enjoying, he's saying that Krishna enjoyed them and, and Vishwadev is enjoying seeing him doing it. And here, here it is again, the gopis and Krishna, how they intensify each other's pleasure. You know, their pleasure is intensified by seeing others' pleasure. It seems to be, uh, for me at least, another one of those examples. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. S someone else had their hand up? Uh -huh. Sachitana Das. Maharaj, uh, this is not regarding to this particular question. I have um, some doubts regarding Vishmadev was putting Uttarayana. So, here in Sanskrit words, Uttarayana has two meanings. One thing is Uttarayana means sun moves from south pole to north pole. That is. Uttarayana, Dakshinayana to Uttarayana. And Uttarayana has another meaning that the son of Uttara was saved by, Svarikshit was saved by Krishna. That's why Krishna's another name is Uttarayana. So Vishwadeva is waiting for Krishna or Vishwadeva is waiting for the time that the son moved from South Pole to North Pole. So can you Maharaj please clarify that one? Well, you can say both were achieved. So, of course, Lord Krishna had been there for some time. Lord Krishna had come there with Maharaj Yudhisthira, so he spent many days there hearing Bhishma give instruction. 
So it's not that he was just waiting for Lord Krishna to come and then he departs. But certainly after he finished giving instruction, then he took the opportunity to concentrate fully on Lord Krishna and he took advantage of the presence of Lord Krishna there to absorb his thinking, feeling, willing in Lord Krishna. His, fo his mind fully focused and, con and entered fully into Lord Krishna, on Lord Krishna. So he certainly took advantage of the presence of Lord Krishna, but he also took advantage of that auspicious time of the movement of the sun. So both purposes were achieved. He waited for both, right? Certainly as devotee, as a devotee, he doesn't need to wait for Uttarayana. He doesn't need to wait for the sun to change direction. Prabhupada explains, and Lord Krishna also explains in the Bhagavad Gita in the eighth chapter, that for the devotee, they can leave the body any time. There's no question of inauspiciousness for a do pure devotee. One in Krishna consciousness, he can leave the body any time. He doesn't have to wait for Uttarayana to leave the body. So in that way, he was not waiting for the time. He was waiting for Krishna only. Yeah, but, but I told you, Krishna had already been there a long time. But he, he, was, he wanted it so that he wanted at the last moment of his life, he could see... Krishna face to face, then leave his body. Well, of course. Of course. That's described in great detail. Yes. That's the whole point. We're, we're explaining that. But he also, wait, he also took advantage of that time. You know, just For like... Transcendental devotee, he, does, he does not need any... Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't, but just to show the example to others. Because others may criticize. Because he has that power that he can leave the body at will. So he chose to wait for that particular time when he could, for the auspicious time. Because it's an example to others. Other mystic yogis, not just everyone, but mystic yogis in particular, they want to leave the body at that particular time. So he's showing the example to others. I explained this yesterday. I explained Prabhupada left the body in Vrindavan to show example to others. Now he didn't have to leave the body in Vrindavan, he can leave the body anywhere, but for an example, to teach by example. Right? In Bhagavad Gita, third chapter, it describes the, the great souls, they have no duties to perform, but still they do everything. Why? For the purpose of teaching others by their example. And we have the example, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives the example, Maharaj Janaka. And then he, Lord Krishna said, he himself performs his duty to teach others for the purpose of showing the example. So here we have also Grandfather Bhishma leaving the body. He's showing an example for, for some people who are not so devoted. Those people who may not be such devotees. But for the pure devotee, definitely it doesn't matter. There's no doubt about that. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Well, certain, certainly it's recommended. It's, yes. Vishnu, uh, Vishnu, uh, uh, they got relations with the Lord uh, in verse number 33, as a he, he had thrown the arrow, and Lord took as if uh, somebody had thrown the flower on him, offering the flower. And in verse number 34, uh, piercing of the arrows to the Lord, uh, he felt like biting of infidelity. And in verse number 38, uh, 
Vishnu Dev has got a relationship with the Lord fighting as an enemy. So there are three kinds of relationship with the Lord Vishnu Dev has got. Okay, one is as like a lover. One is lover, second is servitorship, and third is as an enemy, enemy. The enemy, right. You want, okay, thank you very much. Would you like to explain more about how Bhishma Dev is the enemy of the Lord? I thought Bhishma Dev was a devotee. Uh, the Lord has got different kind of mellows. Uh, so he has got that kind of mellow, uh, virus, and that uh, he had played a role Okay. Yes, certainly uh, Krishna takes pleasure in having this relationship with Bhishma. That although Bhishma is on the other side of Lord Krishna and he's a devotee, it's very pleasing to Krishna to fight with his devotee. Krishna takes pleasure with it in, in, in this that his devotee is fighting against him. And we can see in the picture, in this illustration on the slide just now, how Lord Krishna is coming towards Bhishma carrying the chariot wheel. That Bhishma vowed that tomorrow I'm going to, I'm going to kill Arjuna and he had special arrows ready to kill Arjuna. But then Arjuna, and he, he gave the arrows to Duryodhan, and Duryodhan was keeping them, and he said, tomorrow I'll give you them, you kill the five Pandavas. And then what happened was, that night Arjuna came, and he asked Duryodhan that, you know, you said you'd give me something, can you give me those five arrows you've got? And so Duryodhan had to give the arrows to Arjuna. So the, this was Lord Krishna's trickery. Krishna had told Arjuna, go and get those arrows, take them from Duryodhana. And so then Bhishma heard about this, so he understood the next day. He said, tomorrow Krishna will break his promise. Lord Krishna had promised not to fight, but we see him picking up the chariot wheel. He's coming towards Grandfather Bhishma he wants, as if to kill him with the chariot wheel. And Grandfather Bhishma is surrendering, he's not trying to resist, he's not trying to fight back. He's offering him his body, he's happy to be killed by Lord Krishna. He's willing to let Lord Krishna kill him. But of course then, just at that point the battle ended and Bhishma was saved. And Arjuna, he's trying to stop Lord Krishna, he's trying to hold back Krishna, but Krishna is angry. Is rushing towards Grandfather Bhishma. So this is for the, all for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. This is his enjoyment. Our, we heard Grandfather, what is Bhishma's relationship with Krishna? He is a servant, right? Dasharas. And his service is to give pleasure to Krishna. And his service is to fight with Krishna. And he, a Bhishma, Grandfather Bhishma's secondary rasa is chivalrous. Grandfather Bhishma is chivalrous in his behaviour with Lord Krishna. They have this wonderful relationship. <laughs> so Grandfather Bhishma is very, <laughs> in some very mannerly, respectful, and he's fire, firing the arrows, and the arrows are like somebody offering flowers. Krishna, but the arrows are piercing the body of Lord Krishna. And Krishna's body is, we heard, uh, Krishna's body is smeared with blood, but it, it looks more beautiful to Grandfather Bhishma. And Grandfather Bhishma, at the time of leaving the body, he's remembering these details of Lord Krishna. His hair dust colored, uh, ash, co ash colored with the dust raised by the hoofs of the horses and his beads of sweat because of driving the chariot and now picking up the chariot wheel, so beads of sweat 
and he drops his outer garment as he came running towards Grandfather Bhishma. He drops his outer garment. <laughs> Grandfather Bhishma is remembering all of this at the time of death. He's, this is all, this is how his mind is occupied in remembering Lord Krishna. So this is very important to fix the mind on Krishna, to reflect on all of the different dealings. Right? So this was one of the pastimes Grandfather Bhishma was remembering and at the point just before he leaves the body. What else did Grandfather Bhishma think about before he left the body? Anyone else remembers some other pastimes he was thinking about? Who else did he think about? Hare Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, this one there quote about the uh, gopis. Yeah, what did he think about the gopis? Uh, I am not uh, really remember, but I just remember that he thought about gopis at that time. Anybody else is there would like to tell us why Bhishma brought up the gopis? Anyone? Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes? Hare Krishna Maharaj Mahamrabhi senses. Uh, in text 40, Bhishma Dev says his smile attracted the gopis. Who's smiling? And the Krishna, Krishna's whose motions and smiles of love attracted the damsels of Rajakam, the gopis. Okay, yes. So Krishna's, why is Bhishma remembering this? Bhishma's a brahmachari. Why he's thinking about the gopis? Yeah, they're even on a higher level than Arjuna. Even Arjuna, he's not on the level of these gopis. These gopis had the highest love of Krishna. Arjuna's a devotee and he's a friend of Krishna, but he's not on that level of the gopis who gave everything, who sacrificed everything for Krishna. So Bhishma is remembering these gopis the mood is that he wants to, that they will also bless him. He wants to get the blessings of these gopis that as they gave everything for Krishna, he also wants to, you know, he wants to follow their example. He, just like the gopis' minds are so absorbed in thought of Krishna, so Bhishma wants to have also absorb his mind just like the gopis. Right? And then another pastime mentioned? He remember uh, Arjuna as Patasarati because uh, he was seeing uh, Krishna from front side, but Arjuna was not able to see Krishna from the side. He was seeing just Krishna from the back side. So, in that sense. Yes. Yes, that's right. So, who is relishing the form of Krishna more, Arjuna or Bhishma? Bhishma does. Yes, right. Yes, Bhishma is able to see. He's able to see directly Lord Krishna because Lord Krishna is driving the chariot. But Arjuna is behind Krishna. He can only see the back of Krishna. So Bhishma is more fortunate than Arjuna. He's able to relish directly the form of Krishna, the features of Krishna. Uh huh. Anything else? Maharaji also, uh, remember about the uh, Bhagavad Gita, which uh, Sri Krishna told to Arjuna. Yes, right. What happened? Uh, because uh, uh, when Arjuna got 
perplexed about uh, seeing his own kinsman then to make him out of ignorance uh, krishna himself spoke to bhagavad gita so this is what you meant bring that right right arjuna says to krishna bring the chariot into the middle i want to see everyone who's assembled here and lord krishna pulls the chariot into the middle and said there's bishma there's drona and there's all these different all the other different sons of dhritarashtra and and then arjuna becomes overwhelmed and perplexed that should i fight should i not fight and krishna has to speak bhagavad gita to enlighten him right hmm. Sorry? May I ask one question, Maharaj? Yes, please. Uh, Maharaj, uh, Bhagavad Gita was spoken on the first day of the battle. Is this correct understanding? Spoken when? On the first day of the battle. Yes, before the battle began, before the battle, prior to the battle, Krishna speaks Bhagavad Gita. Right. Oh, there, there was a, because Duryodhana had promised Arjuna that if, if you want anything, if I can do anything for you, you ask me, you come, and I'll be, I'll be happy to do it. So Krishna told Arjuna, you go and get those arrows. One more thing which is mentioned also in uh, the prayers of Grandfather Bhishma, he mentions also about the, the Rajasuya sacrifice. The, the Maharaj Yudhisthira performed this, so Bhishma remembers this. how all the great sages and everybody had come, great kings, they all came to attend the Rajasuya sacrifice and at that time everybody honoured Lord Krishna. Not everyone accepted him as the personality of Godhead, but they all understood he was a very great personality, very powerful personality. And so this is all, these things are mentioned in Bhishma's prayers as he prepares to depart. Maharaj, can I ask a question? Please. Uh, in, the, in the last uh, in, uh, incident, uh, so 41, uh, in the translation it is said, uh, the Bhishma said, said this, this happened during my presence, this last few year yoga activity. Uh, this happened during my presence and I remember the incident in order to keep my mind upon the Lord. But in part, part Srila Prabhupada started with, after gaining victory in the battle of Kurukshetra, Maharaj Rishta uh, performed the Rasri sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, these uh, two things is not able, I'm not able to understand. I'm also not able to understand this. I was reading this myself this morning and I was thinking about this. Now, how could this happen? <laughs> it's an interesting point. Yeah, I, I, I don't know myself, you know, because I also thought the Rajasuya sacrifice is performed after the battle of Kurukshetra. And certainly we know Maharaj Yudhisthira did, he performed I think three Rajasuya sacrifices after the battle of Kurukshetra. So Grandfather Bhishma is on the bed of arrows, I don't see how he could have attended, you know. <laughs> it's, it's puzzling. So I'm sorry Prabhu, I, I'm not able to answer that point. <laughs> oh, okay. But but we do, we do know Grandfather Bhishma was he does pray about the, the Rajasuya sacrifice. He does mention that, right? Yes, yes. Text 41, is it? Where, where, where was the Rajasuya sacrifice performed? Well, it will be in Hastinapur. Or maybe, well, it doesn't mention. It says, at the Rajasuya Yagya sacrifice performed by Maharaj Yudhisthira, there was the greatest assembly of all the elite men of the world. The royal and learned orders, and in that great assembly, Lord Sri Krishna was worshipped by one and all, 
is the most exalted personality of Godhead. This happened during my presence, and I remember the incident in order to keep my mind upon the Lord. So, as Prabhu said, in the purport, Prabhupada writes that uh, after gaining victory in the battle of Kurukshetra, Maharaj Yudhisthira performed the Rajasuya sacrifice. Maybe he did it at Kurukshetra. <laughs> well, yeah, but. Maharaj? Yes? Uh, in Mahabharata, when Pandavas uh, were established in uh, Indra Prastha, so they, uh, Narada Muni had instructed them to do this yagya, and uh, on this yagya there were all these great personalities. Uh, all the Bishwade was there, and he was, he stand up when, when Shishupa was uh, wanted, uh, uh, protested to that Krishna should be uh, worshipped as first, so Bhishma Dev uh, stand up and uh, protested against Shishupa. So I think this this was the kind of sacrifice that, which is remembering Bhishma Dev. Because there was Lord Krishna was there established as the Lord, as the as the as the first person which should be offered the the honor. Yes. You know? Right. Ugra Puja. Agra Puja. Yeah. yeah, but the, the point is, Prabhu, you see, Prabhupada is saying here that the, this yagya, yagya was performed after the battle of Kurukshetra. So I don't... Yeah, maybe maybe there's some, some other yagya after that also. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's, it's not, not so clear. I'll try to find out. I'll ask some other people who know more. <laughs> Maybe someone can enlighten me. All right. Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead. Uh, let's see. Oh, well, well it, it comes time. Oh, let's go through the slides first of all. Would someone like to read here? Krishna was taking pleasure as devotee Bhishma was piercing him with arrows. Actually, actually he was taking pleasure. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has given this example that when a lover kisses the opposite lover, even sometimes kissing, there is blood come out. Still it is pleasing. The lover does not complain. Very last. So this is the arrows of uh, Arjuna and Bhishma's arrows fired into Lord Krishna and Arjuna. Bhishma's firing arrows into Lord Krishna, but he's not thinking he's firing arrows. He's thinking he's firing beautiful flowers at Lord Krishna. He's firing them with love. <laughs> so this is Viryarash, right? This is chivalry. Go ahead. When Krishna enjoys with his devotees, the fighting with piercing Krishna's body, that is being enjoyed by Krishna. I think I have explained this in Bhagavat, Bhagavat. So impersonal, without any variety, nobody can live. Even Krishna, the Supreme Lord, he can also say he wants variety. <laughs> he wants variety. Krishna enjoys variety, so he enjoys when his devotee becomes his enemy and he has to fight them. It's for his pleasure. And Bhishma, he's the servant, he's in Dasharas. His job is to give service to Krishna. So, being the enemy of Krishna, that's his service. Very, very, and very, very wonderful that you can be the devotee and be Krishna's enemy, fighting against him. Okay, another slide, someone else can read. His throwing of sad arrows at the transcendental body of the Lord is as good as the worship of another devotee who throws soft roses upon him. The Lord enjoyed the worms created by his great devotee Bhishma Deva and because Bhishma Deva is a devotee in the selfless relations 
he fixes up his mind on Krishna in that wounded condition. 9.34. Mm. Mm. So Bhishma Dev, because he's a great devotee and he's in this really, this is his meditation. He's meditating, he's, his mind is actually absorbed. I think after the battle, when Lord Krishna comes before him, there at Kurukshetra, Lord Krishna, after the battle, they came, they're described as being very, the, Maharaj Yudhisthira was like Kuvera. And so they were coming very, with great opulence because Maharaj Yudhisthira had become, he'd become the, the emperor. And Lord Krishna had come with them and he'd come with Arjuna. So they were all well dressed and, you know, they, were, they must have been taking care of their wounds and there'd be no blood and everything on his face. But Bhishma, in his mind, he's remembering these features of the Lord as he had appeared before him during the battle. And his meditation is on Krishna as, uh, in this way, as, it, as the driver of Arjuna's chariot. Someone like to read? Another person? Yeah. Someone may feel that, oh, he's only in Dasharas, oh, he's not, he's not, <laughs> he's not a gopi. <laughs> but still, he's a great devotee. We have to understand, Krishna likes variety and he enjoys all these different relationships. Not that everybody can be a gopi <laughs> and enjoy <laughs> as the gopis enjoy, it's, it's a special ras. And so the variety, Krishna wants, he enjoys variety. And Bhishma is a great devotee and he's providing great pleasure for Lord Krishna. Someone can read this? In obedience to the command of his friend, Lord Krishna, Sri Krishna entered the arena of battlefield of Kurukshetra between the soldiers of Arjuna and Duryodhana. Go ahead. And while there he shortened the lifespan of the opposite party by his merciful glance. This was done simply by his looking at the enemy. Let my mind fix, be fixed upon that Krishna. Could you explain to us about this merciful glance of Lord Krishna? And this is the words of Grandfather Bhishma, right? Right. Grandfather Bhishma is describing about the merciful glance of Lord Krishna. Yes. Maharaj, here uh, the Lord had glanced over the uh, grandfather Bhishma. And the uh, uh, Lord uh, Bhishma has got the benediction that he will not, uh, he will die at his own uh, will. And uh, by the glance of the Lord on Bhishma, the life is, of the Bhishma is also shorter. Okay. So definitely the, the, the glance of the Lord on Bhishma is very good for Grandfather Bhishma. What about the other kings? Yes? Yes, 
all of those who died in the battle, right? All 64, million, 64 crore, they all got their swarup, right? If they died in the presence of Krishna, they were able to attain their swarup. That means that they could go back to Godhead. Some would go to Vaikuntha and some may even went to Goloka, according to their swarup. Because it's the glance of the Lord, the merciful glance of Krishna, that they get liberation. So all of those people, this was Krishna's mercy. Krishna had come in the battlefield to give mercy to all those taking part in the battle, that they could all get their swarup. They'd all come to take part in the war, in the great battle, and because Lord Krishna is there, and because they're able to see Lord Krishna, and they're killed in the battle, they, they got their swarup. They went back to Godhead. Very merciful of Lord Krishna. And Grandfather Bhishma, of course, he's also very fortunate, because Lord Krishna had personally come there to see Grandfather Bhishma on his bed of arrows and to appear before him at the time of the departure of Grandfather Bhishma, as Grandfather Bhishma prepared to leave this body, to leave this world. All right, is it clear? We'll go ahead. Someone else read? Fulfilling my desire, surprising his promise, he got down from a chariot, took up his wheel, and ran towards me hurriedly, just as a lion uh, goes to kill an elephant. He even dropped his outer garments on the way. Fulfilling my desire. What was what was the desire? Bhishma's desire. Bhishma was desiring to fight with Krishna? Yes? Uh, the desire of Bhishma was that the Lord should break his promise that right. he will not uh, take up the weapons during the battle. Right, it was the desire of Bhishma that Krishna, either Arjuna will die or Krishna must take part in the battle. And Krishna had promised he wouldn't take part. So in this. So did he take part or didn't he? Yes. Did he take part? Yes, Maharaj. What did he do? He picked up the wheel. Oh. And he tried to hit Vishnu. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. He had spoken a whole Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. And that way he fought. He spoke the Bhagavad Gita in that way he fought? He spoke to Bhagavad Gita to Arjun and he motivated Arjun. Arjun was not willing to fight, and that's why he, he fought. And uh, in that, in that you can say that he fought like that. No, oh, he inspired Arjun yes. to fight. Okay. That's still. I don't think you could hold that against him for inspiring Arjuna to fight. I don't think that. <laughs> but you may say like that. Interesting. <laughs> okay. So just like a lion goes to kill an elephant, usually the lion's more powerful. They're the king of the jungle. They can, the elephants are big, but the lions can kill them. So Krishna came running with his chariot wheel. And then Grandfather Bhishma, he's just ready to surrender. Yes? Go ahead, Madhiji, you can read more. Hare Krishna. Madhiji. Yes, okay, go ahead. Krishna actually did not break his promise. He did not accept any weapon, but he simply showed Bhishma that I have come to kill you with this wheel of the chariot. Sudarshan Chakra is different. These are the reciprocation. Krishna can do anything for his devotee. Lecture, Montreal, August 23, 1968. Okay. 
So this is this is what Prabhupada said, Krishna didn't break his promise. But he just came with a wheel and said, I've come to kill you, but he didn't do it. But if he'd come with Sudarsan Chakra, that would have been a different thing. Krishna didn't bring his Sudarsan Chakra to the battle of Kurukshetra. Krishna can do anything for the devotee. He thought, he thought, Bhishma's promise is more important than my promise, right? He wanted Bhishma to keep his promise. Grandfather Bhishma promised Duryodhan that either I will kill Arjuna or Krishna will break his promise. So Krishna broke his promise. And in that way, he allowed Grandfather Bhishma to keep his promise. The word of the devotee meant more than Krishna's own word. Yes? Someone please read. The Lord was so angry that Arjun checked him when he was moving towards Bhishma Dev. But in spite of Arjun's goes to Adava without caring for his intentions. Apparently, his determination was to kill Bhishma Deva, but actually it was to please him as a great devotee of the Lord. 9.38 per per. Okay. So, in spite of Arjuna's checking, Arjuna, he's trying to keep Krishna back. He doesn't want Krishna to break his promise. He remembers Krishna promised not to fight. And Arjuna thought, oh, this is not good. Krishna's breaking his promise. And he's trying to hold Krishna back. But Krishna, no, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to let him get away with this. <laughs> you know? Krishna's a little angry. The Lord was angry. Arjuna was checking him. And it's coming, but of course it's the loving relationship between Krishna and Bhishma. And Arjuna, of course, also he has also his loving relationship with Krishna. Arjuna is trying to hold Krishna back, but Krishna is, no, I'm going to go. And, and Prabhupada said, like a lover goes to a lover, without caring for hindrances. So this determination actually is to please him as a great devotee. And it certainly it's very pleasing to Grandfather Bhishma. How, is it, how do we know it's pleasing? Because he's remembering this at the time of his death, at the time of his departure. This is his meditation. He's meditating how the Lord came before him like this. How fortunate. Now is Grandfather Bhishma feeling repentant about his actions, about his dealing with Lord Krishna? Remember he'd been firing arrows into the body of Lord Krishna. So maybe there's, is there, could we think there's some repentance on the part of Grandfather Bhishma? No, Maharaj. You don't think so? He was what? More pleased. He was not pleased? He was getting more uh, pleasure by remembering this incident rather than feeling dependence. I'm not understanding. I couldn't hear you clearly what you say, Prabhu. I'm sorry. Maharaj, I'm trying to say that uh, Bhishma Dev, he felt more pleasure by remembering the whole incident. Bhishma felt pleasure remembering the incident. Yes. Yes, he did. Yes, definitely that's true. He felt pleasure remembering the incident. And Krishna, is, did Krishna also feel pleasure in the incident? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. How do you know? Yeah, here we see Krishna's angry. But is it 
Is his anger with Arjuna or is his anger with Bhishma? Arjuna. Yeah, it seems to be that his anger is with Arjuna. Arjuna is trying to hold him back. But it's a wonderful Leela anyway, and there's a lot of rasa there, <laughs> different rasas. Someone please read this next statement. There was no need to come before Bhishmadev with blood and wounds, but he did so because the warrior devotee wanted to see the transcendental beauty of the Lord decorated with wounds created by the pure, by a pure devotee. This is the way of exchanging transcendental rasa or relationship between Lord and the servant. <laughs> Bhishma Dev wants to see Krishna with all these wounds. But when he sees these wounds on the body of the Lord, now this is another thing, how can we understand the, the wounds on the body of Krishna? Isn't Krishna's body transcendental? Yes. Can someone explain? Yes, please. Um, just, just I'm thinking his Lila Shakti will produce this, um, this wounds and blood just to, to make the Lila um, more ecstatic for his devotees. Okay, yes. But actually the body of, what is the form of Krishna? What is it constituted of? Achirananda. Satchitananda, right, yes, it's spiritual energy, but you could, as Prabhu said, maybe it's the Lila Shakti of the Lord that He allows His wounds to appear on His body and blood to be there, just to satisfy the mind of Bhishma, that Bhishma can remember the Lord, the transcendental beauty of the Lord, decorated by all these wounds. Very unusual, very unique rasa. <laughs> transcendental rasa between the Lord and His devotees. So this of course is the meditation of Grandfather Bhishma. At the time of his quitting the body, he's remembering Lord Krishna as Partha Sarati. You can see in this slide, Lord Krishna holding the, the whip in one hand and the reins of the chariot in the other and driving the chariot of Arjuna. And this is how uh, it, it said Grandfather Bhishma, he's liberated to a planet in Vaikuntha where the Lord appears as Partha Sarati. Maharaj, can I ask a question? Please. So when we get to the point of departing from these bodies, um, and, and of course the, our agenda is to remember Krishna, one way that we can do this is by remembering all the services that we did that we performed as devotees um, and, our, and the reciprocation that Krishna gave us for those services. I mean, that seems to be like a principle. You know, here, I mean, we may not be on that platform of um, being able to hold Krishna's body with girls or, um, or, or um, by his, you know, by him, <laughs> the gopis, but we've, we've rendered service. So it seems like that might be a good way to channel our mental energy at the end. Oh, you're saying our mental energy, channel our mental energy into remembering our own activities and our own service to the Krishna consciousness movement. Well, it's to, it's, it was rendered to please Krishna. Uh -huh. um, the service was rendered to please Krishna, if we had that mood, then um, maybe it's, there's some legitimacy in that. It might be an easier pathway. And yeah. Prabhupada said to, to, in a conversation with Tamal Krishna Maharaj, you know, that um, uh, he, he asked, I, know, I don't know if I should tell the whole thing, but... Um, Tamal Krishna Maharaj says this in the beginning day, days of Juhu. I might have told this in this class, I'm not sure. Um, in, in the beginning days of Juhu, Tamal Krishna Maharaj exclaimed, 
how can I think of Krishna? My mind is simply filled with temple finances. And so then uh, Prabhupada responded by saying, yes, many lifetimes we've wasted on ourselves. If just in this one lifetime we can dedicate heart and soul to pushing on Lord Chaitanya's movement, then at the end, even if we're not completely perfect, Lord Chaitanya will personally come and take us back to Godhead. So, you know, I saw this with my friend Nirguna, and um, it seems to be it seems to be some legitimacy in this. You know, I mean, that was what the kind of the discussions that would take place. You know, devotees would call you know, go to from around the world and they would always talk about the service they did together. And there was no question in anyone's mind at the end he had achieved a very high level of Krishna consciousness and went back to Godhead because he was a very dedicated servant of, of Prabhupada's mission. So there seems to be legitimacy in that. You know, I mean, we may come to the platform where we're actually meditating upon the pastimes of the Lord, and that's ideal, for sure. But that's up to Krishna, <laughs> whether we come to that platform, you know. We, if we can't demand that, and uh, the, the mercy that we've gotten over the years is with the service that he's enabled us to do. Yes. Like, like he enabled our, he enabled uh, Bhishma Dev to to attack him with arrows. And that was his little chunk of service, very unique service. Oh, yes, very interesting, interesting uh, thought about how we could uh, actually apply this kind of principle in our own life. You know, in our own preparation for leaving the world is it enough is it are we allowed just to meditate on our own service which we did or do we want to just think only of krishna's lila think about grandfather bishma and haridas thakur and krishna i was just thinking i was just remembering the last verse of the isha upanishad there's a prayer like that it says please my dear lord please remember all that i have done for you it's actually Right, yes, in Sri Ishopanishad, right, yes, right. Please remember all that I have done for you, right. That the prayers offered at the time of leaving the body. Thank you, Prabhu, very good, yes. It, it, it kind of, um, it's just, it, it's so endearing, you know, to our hearts because we work so hard, you know, to push the movement in. Yes. And, uh, it's something that's very close to our hearts. So it seems like a natural, it's not that we don't think of Krishna, <laughs> but I mean, just like you got Pankajanga and Janani Vas, they've done almost 50 years of, of worship of Radha Madhava. So obviously if they think of Radha Madhava and the service, you know, it's not different, but also, you know, to, to do the services, we've chanted the holy name and the holy name is not different than Krishna. And, um, you know, so there's many different instances, you know, where we, we were in ecstasy with the reciprocation Krishna gave us that we can think about. Possibility, you know, I, I don't have any reference, but it seems to follow this train of thought that um, we're discussing now. Yes, it's an interesting application of uh, the principle which has been applied here by Grandfather Bhishma. Certainly he's remembering his dealings with the Lord. So in the same way we can also reflect on our own service, whatever contributions we made. They may seem somewhat insignificant, but at the time of death, you know, whatever little service, whatever we've done, it can give us the greatest benefit. It may not be too long before this happens. Too, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely <so>. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have to prepare uh, anytime. Well, that, that's the point that even even for young people, you know, you you, you don't know when it can, it's going to come. Even young people also die sometimes. What to speak of old? Of course, old people. Would, for, for certain, coming quick. Any other comments on this from... Yeah, Maharaj, uh, from your side, which is the uh, best possible 
in preparation uh, for the uh, final examination. What is the best possible preparation for the final examination? I would say the best possible preparation for the final examination is to really absorb yourself fully in devotional service. Whatever service you're doing, just really absorb yourself into it, get right into it and do as much a service as you can. And use, utilize every moment in Krishna consciousness and don't waste time. All right, that's when you're in the final stage of life, when you're preparing to leave the body. Yes, it's very difficult. But you, we, need to, we need to have the blessing of devotees. Devo we should invite, have devotees to come to chant. That's why I said it's best to leave the body in a holy place, like Vrindavan or Mayapur, and then devotees will come and they'll chant for you regularly, or they will read. Just like when Srila Prabhupada was in Vrindavan in his final days, he had all the time kirtan. We were always go going in Prabhupada's room to do kirtan. He wanted kirtan all the time. Even when he came into Mumbai, Juhu, before he went to Vrindavan, we were going to his room to do kirtan. There was a schedule. Prabhupada wanted kirtan. And I remember... You were there in Vrindavan when he left Maharaj? I had the unfortunate experience, I think I left the day before Prabhupada left. Because what happened, you know, the, nobody knew what was happening and I had a party and we had things pending and I saw Jai Pataka Maharaj came, Jai Pataka Maharaj left and I thought, well Jai Pataka Maharaj is leaving, I thought, I guess it, it's okay, you know, I guess it's okay to go because for some time Prabhupada had been sick and we didn't know he was going to leave or not. We didn't know what was happening. You know, I never thought Prabhupada was going to leave. I, I, I didn't think Prabhupada was going to leave us. I, I, I was shocked when I heard he'd left. So we, had, we came all the way back. We'd left, but we came back. You were at you were Sangatan party in India? Yeah. So, uh, 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 I forgot what, what I was talking about now. No? The consciousness at the time of death. Right. Uh, uh, somebody's sick, you want to come to the holy place, and the holy place people will come and chant. And probably we were always coming to chant for Prabhupada. At the time Prabhupada left the body, you know, Prajumna was sitting there reading from the purports of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati. Prabhupada wanted to hear. So Prajumna sat there and read Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati's purports. And devotees were doing kirtan. And they were holding the pictures of the deities in front of Prabhupada. And he had garlands from the deities around his neck. Just like Grandfather Bhishma. Grandfather Bhishma, he had every, everything was centered on Krishna. His eyes were fully focused on Lord Krishna. His mind was fully absorbed in thought of Krishna. All of his senses were fully in Krishna consciousness. So at that, in that manner he left the world. Where there's Krishna, there's no Maya. So this is the point. Uh, we saw, I was talking about Gunagrahi Maharaj yesterday. He also left the body in Vrindavan. And devotees, I wasn't there, but the devotees, they were doing one, just kirtan all the time, for a long time. They were doing kirtan for him. And he was, he's, he was a kirtaneer, he was into it, he was doing kirtan with them. But at the end, of course, he couldn't, but he could hear the kirtan. So that's what you want, you want to be, you, you, if we're helpless at the time of death, just like uh, Madhavendra Puri is described, Madhavendra Puri was leaving the body. Ishwara Puri was taking care of him. 
And Madhavendra Puri, as he was leaving the body, you know, he couldn't control his organs and so on. Madhavan and Ishwara Puri was taking care of him and at the same time reminding him of Krishna. All the time reminding him of Krishna. So because Ishwara Puri rendered so much service to Madhavendra Puri, Ishwara Puri went on to become the spiritual master of Lord Chaitanya. So it's a great service. It's a very, very valuable service to help devotees to prepare to leave the world. I'm not... It's, it's, a, it's the most ecstatic service I ever did. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, it's certainly incredible. It's certainly a very intense service. I know Govinda Maharaj, his whole Bhakti Bringa Govinda Maharaj, he's done this service. I saw him do it for Bodhi Manta, when Bodhi Manta had brain cancer. You know, Bodhi Manta, he had a big, strong American body and he was really in a lot of pain. He'd be screaming in pain sometimes and he would, nobody could deal with him. Only Govinda Maharaj would come in and grab him and he could handle him, you know. And they helped him to leave the body in Vrindavan. And then again with Gunagrahi Maharaj. So he had, he had, he did that service very nicely. And we heard Prabhupada give blessing to Brahmananda, right? Brahmananda had taken Prabhupada out of the hospital. <laughs> Brahmananda had taken, when Prabhupada was in the hospital in New York, Brahmananda took him out. And, and Brahmananda got the blessing from Prabhupada. He said, you will not die in the hospital. Because you've taken me out of the hospital, you will not die in the hospital. And it, he didn't. Brahmananda was, he passed away in Vrindavan. He was getting ready to go to hospital, but he passed away in Vrindavan. So Prabhupada's blessing was there. Any other examples you can think of? Any devotees here? You had any experience helping take care of people, leaving the body? She has also cancer, and uh, I was praying to Krishna that I I can uh, be with her when she will leave her body. And uh, but it was impossible to go for me to the place where she was living. But one day I one day I went there, and uh, it's it looks that she she's got badly, and I and I said just to the doctors. Please let me hear. I am a priest. I will read my mother from uh, uh, religious scriptures, <laughs> and uh, they they let me there after they closed the uh, hospital. So and I was chanting with her and reading Krishna book to her, and in that mood she she left the body. And when she was leaving the body, I was really uh, loudly chanting the holy name uh, of the Lord. So. Yes, it was very intense experience. Very nice. You, that was a very great service. You'd, now, now Prabhupada writes in the purport, he said, it's the duty of human beings to leave the body like Bhishma. He said, we don't want to leave like animals. We want to leave the body, we should leave the body like Bhishma left the body. Yes? Any other points? And, uh, yes, Maharaj, yes, can I please share? Uh, yes, please do. Uh, like I remember, even in our childhood, uh, when my grandfather left his body, like all the people in the village come to the house and then everyone just only chant. There was no other talking. Everyone is just chanting. So how Srila Prabhupada has given us that culture, you know, which is lost now. So I remember when my grandfather, grandmother, when they all left, like we were small children, but everyone told us, no, sit and chant, sit and chant. So it was just chanting that was going on in the house. Oh, wonderful. So Very nice. And they would chant Maha Mantra? 
yes 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 maharaj mainly the hari krishna maha mantra or maybe narayana but mainly it was hari krishna ah, very nice and uh, i was also thinking about the uh, mata ji in scotland who left the body the book is there simple for the simple uh, puri maharaj's wife yes that, yes yeah and the mat so in that book it is mentioned about palindri mata ji who took care of her for the last time and then i was thinking what happened to her the devotee who served the mata ji and then when we went to govardhan we saw that she lives in govardhan she so lives got shelter of govardhan she and lives she in govardhan see, yes Whoa. in that uh, radha banvihari temple the mata ji who takes care of the temple uh -huh. she is palindri mata ji and then i saw that she is the one who served the mata ji oh so wonder like how serving a devotee krishna gave her uh, shelter in govardhan Yes, yeah, yeah. Near Kusum Sarovar, just next to Kusum Sarovar. Right, right. Yeah, I know that place. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Manaji. Very nice. Okay, we'll go ahead. Uh, let's see. Would someone like to read for us, please? At the moment of death, let my ultimate attraction be to Sri Krishna. The personality of Godhead. I concentrate my mind upon the chariot driver of Arjuna, who stood with a whip in his right hand and a bridle rope in his left. Thus, he became silent and his breathing stopped. All right. So, this is a glorious departure of Grandfather Bhishma. Of course. Haridas Thakur, his departure is also compared to the passing away of Grandfather Bhishma. And Haridas Thakur, he le how did he leave? He left in Kirtan, right? Lord Chaitanya came and all the devotees and they, served, and they had a big Kirtan. And Haridas Thakur held Lord Chaitanya's feet on his head and gave up his body, just like that. In the Kirtan. So this is a parallel to Grandfather Bhishma's departure. And we have so many examples. We have Srila Prabhupada's own example, how Prabhupada came to Vrindavan and how he had all the, all the devotees, you know, the devotees would come and tell him what preaching they were doing. Prabhupada would feel happy. To see the books printed and to hear the book distribution scores. And Prabhupada would also, he, he always wanted kirtan. I had the experience, we were doing kirtan in Prabhupada's room in Bombay, in Juhu there, and uh, the devotee I was with, he was he started to chant Govinda Jai Jai, Gopala Jai Jai. Prabhupada opened. His eyes looked at us and said, just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Prabhupada just wanted to hear the Hare Krishna mantra, didn't want anything else. So that was like, that was one significant instruction I got from Prabhupada. <laughs> Ma Maharaj, could I make a small, small comment? Yes. Oftentimes because of the, the particularly Western culture, death is considered a real tragic event. But for the Vaishnavas, it's actually a very blissful event. I mean, there, there's that feeling of separation. But, you know, the, I know with the experience with my friend Nargona, it was like the atmosphere was just surcharged with bliss. And um, it was so auspicious. Wow. Really? How, how long had he been there? He was uh, two and a half months in um, Mayapur. And um, I went to teach Nectar of Instruction in the VIG. My wife sent me, uh, called me and, uh, and um, Brad asked me and said, you should come back immediately, otherwise you won't see Nagona. But he lasted quite a bit longer. 
Um, and it was just, you know, his, the first uh, BBT photo that he saw of Krishna was on a Back to Godhead magazine of, of, uh, of, of Krishna lifting Govardhan Hill. And um, so he's very attached to that. So we had a special Govardhan Puja. This was in the first MI classroom on the ground floor. This is where he left. We had all these um, BBT photos on the ceiling that he could see. And uh, so we had a big uh, Govardhan Puja. We had a Govardhan Hill that the devotees built. And uh, I was just ecstatic. And then he left. I can't remember the date now, but it was like maybe a week after Govardhan Puja. Something like that. Were you with him when when he left? I just came downstairs, you know, because I was upstairs in my office making arrangements with the government so that his body could be cremated. And I came down and he just made his last breath. <laughs> just as I entered the room, you know, there's ecstatic kirtan going on. And, um, but yeah, it was just, it was amazing. We had an all night kirtan. Kermit the cook. He was um, roommates with Nirguna like a couple years before in the Polish tour. And uh, both of their wives left them. And then they had this kind of, uh, you know, they, had, they connected in a very deep way. And he was, so, he was he's an incredible kirtan leader. Usually we think of him as a cook, but he's a great kirtan leader. And he was leading the kirtan through half the night. Kurma. And, uh, Kurma, yeah. A great kirtan leader, huh? Yeah, yeah, super good. Wow. And, uh, you know, the, the whole room, you know, that first MI classroom, you know, 16 by 20 foot, we had about 85, 90 devotees <laughs> in there at the time of Nirguna's departure. Whoa. It was, it was really an experience, a completely blissful one. And, um, you know, just one miracle after another would take a place. The night before, I'll tell you a little of this story. Um, Jai Pataka Swami was his GBC. He was temple president at the farm in Tennessee. And, um, and he had also married uh, Jai Pataka Swami's uh, uh, disciple. And then he was Sangatan leader in, in, in Atlanta towards the end of his life. And um, so I arranged for him to speak with him on the phone. So like the night before he left, I went to Naguna because I, I, I found the Jaipataka Swami, located him in Los Angeles. And uh, so I told Naguna in five minutes, Maharaj will talk to you. And Naguna kind of like pushed me away. It was like, I just felt this energy, like he didn't want to talk. And so um, Grahila, you know, the Prabhupada disciple who was an indexer for the... Yeah, community. yeah. Yeah. He was massaging his legs at the time, his legs and feet, because if he didn't get that constant vigorous massage, it would be an excruciating pain. So he was on shift at that time. I went to Grahila, I said, what's going on with Nirguna? He said, I don't know, Jamastami, but I think he's about ready to leave his body. And then, um, so there was a doctor that Radnas Chami arranged to come to Mayapur. He was, you know, a specialist in, um, oh, what do you call it, when someone's, that, that special medical specialization when someone's... Hospice, uh, hospice. Uh, yeah, palliative care. That's it. So he came, you know, I woke him up because he'd already taken a rest and he said he checked his pulse and blood pressure. Yep, just a few hours left. So then we started the all night kirtan and then after Mongol I made an announcement and invited all the devotees to come and so many came. So it was just like a really blissful experience for everybody, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. Nirguna. He, he was in ecstasy. It's like, I, I can't, I don't want to take all the time, but there was like an amazing miracle took place, mm. um, you know, at the end. And he spoke with Hari Sari about it. Hari Sari wrote about it. It's still on Dundavats. <laughs> you know, the past, passing pastime. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. Very interesting. Certainly, uh, devotees leaving the body is something which we all have an opportunity to observe and we will have to also leave the body, all of us, we have a material body, we have to one day leave this body, so we have to prepare, we have to know what to expect and we have to know what should be done. Oh, next quote, 944, Bhishma Dev as a pure devotee of the Lord entered the spiritual realm in one of the Vaikuntha planets where the Lord 
in his eternal form as Parthasarati predominates over the uncon unconditioned living beings who are constantly or consistently in constantly engaged in the service of the Lord. Prabhupada quotes. Someone can read this one? Oh yes, here's this quote. The human form of life is meant for dying like Bhishma Dev. <laughs> okay, we have to get ready. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, do we, do we have to fill our bodies with arrows also? But Prabhupada mentions sound incarnations, very important. The words Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, very, po very po potent, very powerful for us. So, before leaving the body, really want to absorb the mind and hearing this kind of spiritual sound vibration. So, it's, it's very good at this time we're doing studying Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhakti Vaibhava, all of this. It helps us so much to focus our attention on the scriptures because at the time of death, this is so important, it gives us something to remember. Yes, read. In the Bhagavatam, the activities of the Lord begins from His dealing with the Pandavas. One must hear about the Lord from the very beginning, as in Srimad Bhagavatam or any other scripture. And that will help the hearer attain perfection by progressive development. Right. One more? One should not consider that the Lord's dealing with the Pandavas are less important than His dealings with the gopis. We must always remember that the Lord is always transcendental to the all mundane attachment. In all above mentioned dealings of the Lord, He is the hero in all circumstances. Jai! <laughs> Krishna is the hero. So, we don't just focus on the gopis. We're also hearing about the Pandavas. We hear also Shristi Tattva, creation. We have to hear everything about the Lord. It's all transcendental. Okay, here's an exercise for you. Just take a minute or two. Just think, maybe discuss with a partner if you can. If you have a partner, you can discuss. If you gain. Huh? I'll make them a partner. Okay, thank you. Uh, it uh, put me back from the room. 
I didn't put you back to the room, Prabhu. I, I didn't do anything. You haven't joined the room. But I have no opportunity. I'm here to speak Mani Gopal, is it right? Yeah, Mani Gopal is here. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Are you with a partner? Uh, no, Maharaj, I'm alone. Actually, unfortunately, I was uh, in the meantime uh, from 3 o'clock, I have, I'm conducting an IDC course. So I just was in the other rooms. I could not hear Maharaj. Uh, okay. Please excuse me. <laughs> but you just came, is it? Yeah, yeah, I, I just came. So I see now Murari Pro. Okay. Murari Prabhu, could you please uh, tell me what was their task actually? Could you please tell me? Yes. Uh, we shall discuss uh, about uh, uh, what, what we gained from the Srimati Kunti Devi's uh, part and uh, Bhishma Deva's departure. Uh, what was the main thing for us? Uh, what we gained from the personality? Yeah, few. What we can what we can learn from Kunti Maharani's prayer and Vishma Deva's departure. Am I right? Yes. How much time do we have? Just a couple of minutes. Okay. Shouldn't take. Are you, uh, are you taking any notes? Yes, you, you, you can take. <laughs> right. I don't think you need notes. Uh, this is, I think it's just uh, um, for just such a discussion between us. What we okay, okay. Actually, yeah, what we can see that uh, in both of the pictures, in Kunti Mahani and also in Krishmati, we can see that both of them, they are completely surrendered to Krishna. And this mentality uh, something, is something which is very essential for our life. Especially from Kunti Maharani's uh, portion, we can understand that even in the adverse situations of life, we should all always take shelter of Krishna. And not only in the adverse situations, but even when we are happy in, in happiness, uh, Kunti Maharani was not expecting happiness in his life. Rather, she was praying for Bipada Santu so that Bipada comes danger comes and in that adverse situation she can be more silent Krishna and Krishna will be always with her. So that is something we can, uh, that mood we can imbibe that uh, we are not, uh, we are not running away from danger situation of our life, rather we should take shelter of Krishna in such situations. In the distress also we should take Krishna as shelter and if any, because of our karma any distressful situation comes, we should be welcoming to it because it helps us to remember Krishna more. And from the Vishma Deva's uh, de departure, we see that a devotee, who, uh, a pure devotee, whatever he does, he does it for Krishna's pleasure. And this is why Vishma Deva, because Krishna wanted to uh, taste the Veera Rash and therefore he used Vishma Deva and Vishma Deva, he very nicely, uh, he uh, helped Krishna serve Krishna by that first time. So, and at the last moment, uh, even though he was getting the pain in his body because of the arrows, but he was desiring for Krishna's darshan at the time of the, the perfect situation of death as Maharaj was explaining in the class. So, uh, in Krishna's remembrance, we can uh, give up our life. That's what I uh, I, also, I also was thinking about uh, how Krishna was, uh, through his devotees, showing us uh, how we should deal in our life. When Krishna wants to teach us, so he is teaching us through his devotees and dealing with them. 
So Kuti Devi was one example uh, how he should take uh, shelter of, of Krishna and uh, through their life she was remembering of Krishna. So I was also thinking like this that that this is example for us uh, how yes. we can re remember for Krishna in uh, all circumstances. Yes. And and uh, and Bhishma there was also the example how we how we can uh, uh, pass the the final uh, exam how to say examination in in our life. The, so so he he is giving us example through Bhishma that. Uh, uh, how we can remember on uh, Krishna in uh, in which way and uh, and uh, what is the how it is important also that uh, like through the life we are living in uh, in uh, Krishna conscious that it is easier for us to remember in uh, in the final examination for for the Lord. Yes, very nice. I agree. I'm also inspired about how Bhishma has <laughs> this relationship with Krishna that he can come as Krishna's enemy. And, but it's, his, it's the ecstasy in dealing with Krishna. As a devotee, he's getting ecstasy in his fighting with Krishna. But, yes. <laughs> but Bhishma is the enemy. And Krishna's happy, it's for, it's his, it's Bhishma is Dasha and Dasharas, and this is his service for Krishna, to give Krishna pleasure in fighting. Yes. <laughs> so Krishna likes so much variety. Okay, I think I'll close the, the, these rooms and we'll come back and we can have... Uh, Yes, can we close the rooms now, Prabhu? Oh. Hare Krishna, Prabhu? Prabhu, can we close the rooms now? Yes? The rooms are closed. Oh, thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu's. Uh, Prabhu, uh, Maharaj, it will take 20 seconds for everybody. To Another start. 20 seconds. Thank you. Hare Krishna Prabhu. So did you have a good discussion, Prabhu? Uh, yes, yes, Maharaj. We tried uh, with Hare Chandrika Devi Mataji. Yes. Did you gain anything? Yeah, yes, Maharaj. We, we first uh, first point uh, there are two three three four points uh, first we gained uh, that uh, as Kunti Maharani is uh, always with uh, family but from inside she want an attachment so when that day will come for us that we from outside we will do whatever uh, situation we are but inside we feel detached and attached to Krishna the same is with Bhishma Dev also so he is in the opposite party and but still uh, he's feeling that uh, attachment to krishna no yeah, yeah sorry very nice thank you thank you very much Maharaj, one more uh, in, uh, point uh, we found is that krishna notices everything so bhishma dev the whole life as you told uh, that nobody knew much about bhishma deva he was just doing his family work and his whatever uh, his uh, promises and but Krishna knew and uh, at the last moment he did so whatever we do for our Guru maybe it's not notice it but they are noticing it and finally uh, they will give mercy on us. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. Would anyone else like to share? What they did? Yes. I'd like to share. We was uh, bringing up the point that um, Bhakti overcomes everything there is no impediment to bhakti so even death itself um, has no you know there's um, when there's devotion 
And actually it can be seen that sometimes death can be very favorable for a devotee's devotion. <laughs> it's a favorable situation. And sometimes we see that devotees can make an incredible advancement in the last stages, um, just before death. They can make uh, more advancement than sometimes they make in their whole life. Oh really? Have you seen something like, have you seen some examples? I wouldn't say I have directly seen it, but um, read, I've read that book that Mother mentioned of, called Simple for the Simple. And it gives accounts there how Ratna Ranjini is the mother's name. She was having realizations of her, of her relationship with uh, Krishna and the Pacific service. So details were revealed. And that all happened in the, in the last few weeks of life. Because you might say, you know, obviously when death is coming, then once the material attachments become obviously futile, <laughs> so then you have no choice but to take complete shelter of Krishna. And from that comes wonderful realizations. Mm, thank you. Very nice. Well, my friend, you're going to. Prabhu left his body, there was no question about him, just his spiritual advancement just accelerating like incredibly. Very perceivable by those that were around him. In what ways you saw the spiritual advancement? Uh, it's just the, well, I, gosh, you know, I don't think we got the time, but it, there's, there's a pastime that took place that's remarkable of, of his aspiration. Um, Spiritually, you know, to, um, it would take the rest of the class. Okay, another time. time you can tell me. When I meet you privately, I, I want to hear. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We'll, we'll, we'll just go on with this slide, but I think there's just a, another slide or two just to finish the class. Let's see. Can everyone see the slide? Yes, Mara. Okay. Okay, quote from Prabhupada. In the Bhagavatam you will find everything, politics, sociology, religion, culture, philosophy, science, everything you will find. It is not simply dogmatic, some miracles. No, it is not like that. It is a great science. Therefore, in the beginning it is said, Nigamakopa taror galatampalam. Nigama means the Vedic literature. Nigama, so the essence, the quintessence of Vedic literature, Srimad Bhagavatam. From Srimad Bhagavatam lecture in Mayapur, 1949. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. All right. Any. Any questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, can I ask one question? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Maharaj, when uh, some devotee asked that how should we, uh, His Grace Mahavir Rupa Prabhu asked that uh, how can we prepare for the end and uh, uh, you told that uh, uh, we should just observe in the service and we should try not to waste even a moment. But when Maharaj is doing uh, in, Actually, we try to do it, then in that case, uh, uh, still so many anarthas, they come and because of that mind dragged here and there and uh, also we waste so much time also and uh, we, are, we don't uh, have efficiency also in our service. So uh, what will be our condition in that case, Maharaj? Well, it will depend a lot on what is our consciousness, how much we are actually, you know, really absorbing and giving ourselves to Krishna. We may have problems, we may have difficulties in focusing fully on Krishna's service, but if the motive is there to want to please Krishna, and if we're strictly following the regulated principles, and chanting every day, doing the chanting minimum, 16 rounds. Prabhupada said, 
Krishna will force himself into our minds at the time of death and take us back to Godhead. So Prabhupada had said like that. The devotee said, Prabhupada, you know, he said, I, he said, you know, I just can't think of Krishna. I, you know, I can, I, you know, I'm a devotee. I'm, I'm doing my rounds and I'm following the principles, but difficult for me to focus my concentration on Krishna. So Prabhupada just told him, he said, you just go ahead, you keep doing this, you keep chanting and do everything you're supposed to do. At the time of death, Krishna will force himself into your mind and take you back to Godhead. So we're really dependent on the mercy of Krishna. Like Krishna says in the 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he said, I am the swift deliverer from the ocean of birth and death. So Krishna comes on the back of Garuda to pick us up from the ocean of this material existence. We're entangled, we're caught up. And we see the example of Bhishma Dev. He had so many things. He was also, you know, a worldly person. But then it was arranged, Krishna arranged at the end of his life, he could just stop everything, put aside everything, and Krishna personally came there, and Bhishma could fully absorb himself in Krishna Consciousness. So Janmashtami also quoted how Prabhupada told Tamal Krishna Maharaj. Tamal Krishna Maharaj was saying, I'm doing all this work for building the temple in Bombay, so many laws of the municipality, it's all mundane, I just want to study your books. But Prabhupada said, you build the temple. And Prabhupada told Swarup Damodar Maharaj, he told Swarup Damodar Maharaj, he wanted, you know, he wanted to, uh, he's a Manipuri and he wanted to think about Rasa Lila and Prabhupada said, you preach to the scientists that life comes from life and Krishna will reveal your Rasa to you. You don't have to worry what is your Rasa, you just preach to these scientists the real origin of life and, and Krishna will reveal your Rasa. So like that we have to understand Prabhupada's mood, he encouraged always service, not to just, you know, what is my rasa, <laughs> what is my lila with Krishna, but we're not worried for that. Prabhupada wanted to know, how many books have you distributed, how many properties have you acquired, how many devotees have you made? <laughs> Prabhupada was very practical. So like that, we have to focus our mind, concentration, try to please Prabhupada. And if we please Prabhupada, then certainly Krishna will be pleased. Any other question, comment? Thank you, what you just said, Maharaj, kind of supports this point about we can reflect upon the services we've done for Prabhupada's mission, you know, at the end, and get real nourishment from that in our relationship with Krishna. Yes. It's not that we, we don't hear, we read Prabhupada's books, certainly, you know, we hear. I'm just finishing. Okay. Yeah. But we can also reflect in this way, and, um, because that was certainly what Prabhupada wanted. He wanted us to work so hard, it was amazing. I was like, I pretty much, you know me, I was pretty much on a non-stop marathon. <laughs> like my whole life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Prabhupada, Prabhupada said, my Guru Maharaj pushed me, I am pushing you. <laughs> so, we have to push others, we have to push. He said, this is the parampara, you keep pushing. If we don't push, you know, if we don't work like madmen, we won't get anywhere, we won't do anything. So we have to keep going, you have to keep active thinking, how to do it, how to do more what to be done. Never a time to sit back. <laughs> okay, any other comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, you mentioned uh, regarding the query uh, just now that uh, we have to complete Srila Prabhupada focusing on uh, the number of books that we distribute and the uh, number of devotees that we make. But 
in an earlier session, uh, what I understood is that uh, we cannot distribute uh, the books on our own because we may attempt uh, to distribute the books or attempt uh, to make devotees. It is not in our control. We cannot, like suppose if I contact 100 people, maybe only one person may become a devotee. So uh, the result is not in our hands. So in that case, how to basically please uh, Prabhupada? It is, uh, is it that we attempt uh, to uh, reach out more and more people so that they can be into the devotion service or is it the number of books or the number of devotees that we make? Yes, it, it's not just the number of books, number of devotees we make, but it's our, our mood and our focus that our, 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 our desire, that we want to give Krishna consciousness. Of course, why do we want to distribute books? We want to bring people into Krishna consciousness. I remember Prabhupada telling Triparari, I was in New York at the time, and Prabhupada told Triparari, he was the incarnation of book distribution, and he said, people should want to take the book, do not force them. So some, sometimes, you know, we got a bad name because we were so forceful. Nowadays, of course, we give away a lot of books free. A lot of book distribution is just done freely. They give out, we give out the books because we have a big congregation and the congregation donate for the books to be distributed freely. And so a lot of books are going out, but the people who get the books not necessarily interested. But still, we want to distribute the books because we hope that they will find, that eventually somebody who is interested will find the book. So, yeah, the mood is important. The, the mood that we want to give Krishna consciousness. That's Prabhupada's point, you know. He didn't, you know, in Prabhupada's time, everyone was in the temple. It was an ashram-based society. So Prabhupada didn't want us sitting around. So he was concerned, you know, how much property have you got? How many devotees have you made? How many books did you distribute? That was, at that, that time, the focus was like that. Nowadays, the focus is a little different, you see. Nowadays, we try to put more focus, not only just book distribution, but we want to also educate devotees. We try to educate, get devotees to actually read Prabhupada's books. There's a lot of work going on trying to encourage people to read because we do find that, you know, people for a long time were not reading and we need to encourage the devotees to read Prabhupada's books and read them and, and study them as well carefully. So the different courses which we have, they all help to educate people and if people really understand this knowledge, then they'll never forget it. That's fact if they really understand it they'll never forget it and so this is very important for us it's not just only making devotees but we want also people who will stay devotees that they will give their whole life they will come into krishna consciousness they'll be committed and they'll never go away people come and go give up the principles not good and so we want we want to have quality devotees. Yeah, we do like to have property as well, but we have to be able to take care of it. We don't just only want property. If there's nobody there, nobody living there, have a big building, many deities, and nobody there to take care of them, it's not very good. It's not what we want. The temple should be active. There should be programs, regular classes. Lectures, kirtans going on. Temple shouldn't be empty. And temples are meant for everyone, not just only Indian, not just Hindus, for everyone. If, if, if we have only Hindus, the, the, our movement is not successful. Prabhupada wanted everybody to take up Krishna consciousness, give the message to the world. So we don't just only preach to Indian people, we want to preach to everyone, everywhere. So translating the books into all the languages of the world, very important. Okay? 
Any other comment? Anyone? I, have a, I got a comment. I want, want to thank you for such a wonderful unit. We're, actually, we're looking forward to the next unit with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'll leave you to it and we'll, I'll see you next Sunday because next Saturday you have to do some class, exam or something. Assessment, yeah. Assessment. Okay, so I'll meet you next Sunday. Okay, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yeah. Go back to Vrinda Ki.